Howdy and welcome back. So now we're going to take our sign up form and we're going to associate it with a new action, a new create action that's ultimately going to save all of this information into our back end database. So let's get started. Looking at the sign up form, new.ejs, you may have noticed this from the last screencast. We have a hidden input field that is referencing a CSRF value. What, what is that? Well, it stands for cross-site request forgery, and it's to prevent uh, that from happening. So we can enable CSRF by setting this attribute to true, and you can look at this documentation, but essentially what we're doing here is making sure that the server knows where our requests are coming from. And we're going to need this CSRF parameter on basically any requests that we make that are non-GET requests. So essentially that means forms in, in the scope of our application. New.ejs is a form. And all we have to do is put in this hidden field. And Sales is going to do the rest. It's going to take care of the rest. In the last episode, we ended up turning a couple of the blueprints off. So I'm going to turn uh, the shortcuts or the CRUD blueprints back on as well as the REST blueprints. And if you recall, the CRUD shortcuts provide, as a convenience, a way for us to access the data, change it, update it uh, through the browser. And it's going to become apparent why that's going to be useful in our creation of the create action. Speaking of which, let's go into the user controller and take a look at this new action. So we're going to look at this step by step. So we have our user model, and it has a method create, and we're going to pass that method all the parameters, which are all the parameters from new.ejs, and those are going to be passed into this create method to create our user. And we're either going to get back an error or we're going to get back this newly created user. If it's an error, then we're going to return that error. Or if we are successful in creating that user, we're going to respond with some JSON that will contain that user object. So let's start the server and see what this looks like. So I'm going to go to the sign up form. Okay, great. So we get back our name, title, email, pa whoa, password, confirmation. CSRF token, we do not want that. Okay, so this is bad for a couple of different reasons. One, it's bad that this is being saved in our database. It's also bad that this information is ever coming back to our client. But never fear, sales makes it really easy to correct this issue. Okay, so let's go back into our code. And we're actually gonna look at the user model. And a user model can have instance methods. In this case, we're going to overwrite the toJSON method. And with the magic of cut and paste, here's our code. So let's go over this. The toJSON method is going to be called before any data goes to the client. So what I've done here is I've created an object, and I've assigned it to the value, in this case, of the model attributes. And then we go through that object and I take out any of the keys that I don't want getting back to the client. In this case, password confirmation, encrypted password, and the CRS, I don't know why I cannot say this, the CSRF value or key. And then we return the object. So let's see if this worked. I'm going to restart the server. And since we turned on the CRUD blueprints, 
I can actually take a look at all our users by just looking at slash user. And yep, it stripped out those keys that we didn't want. Now, it's not going to strip out created at, updated at, and this key. There's other places to turn those off, but for the purposes of this application, I actually want these fields and I want that key. Okay, now we've prevented those keys from coming back to the client, but guess what? They're still being saved to the database. So we will comment out that to JSON method, restart the server, and I've done something wrong here. Let's see, what have I done? Ah, I commented out too much. I guess I can't do that. Hmm. Well, you know what? I'll just delete it. All right, I'm going to save it. Restart the server. All right. So now when I look at all our users, we get all those keys back. So it's still saving to the database. The 2JSON is preventing those keys from reaching our client, but now we want to prevent them from being saved in the database. Okay, let's see how to do that. We're gonna go back into the user model and it's really pretty simple. We're just going to create a key here called schema and assign it to true. And what that's doing behind the scenes, it's taking the object of whatever's being saved and it's comparing it against the schema and only saving those attributes that exist here and it just throws the rest of them away. So let's restart the server. and create a new user. And we can see here that only those keys that we wanted to be saved are saved. And let's look at our user list. And this was the one before we had schema true and after we have schema true. So in the next screencast, we're gonna start covering validation and validation errors and how we can get those errors injected into our signup form. Thanks for watching.